The modern electric vehicle is about to buy out the conventional IC engine car. So much so that roads may be fully electric in a decade or two. Although the IC engine car and EV look similar on the outside, their inner workings are anything but the same. And it is these very differences that this video is here to take you through. It all starts with their source of energy. When driving an IC engine car, you would pull up to a gas station to fill petrol or diesel. But for an EV, you would have to stop at a charging station to charge the lithium ion battery pack with electricity. As the name suggests, for an internal combustion engine car to run, combustion has to take place. And with any internal combustion system is the release of greenhouse gases and noise pollution. On the other hand, EVs are powered by a battery pack and electricity, because of which there is minimal greenhouse gas emission and noise pollution. Even though hybrid and plug-in hybrid EVs are partially powered by fuel, the overall CO2 emission of these is relatively less than that of an IC engine car, which is fully powered by gasoline. Now, hold on, we can't ignore the elephant in the room. Yes. EVs indirectly emit greenhouse gases because the electricity they run on is generated from burning fossil fuels. But at the same time, this amount of CO2 emission does not come close to that released by IC engine cars. Although this difference in energy source sounds like it gives the EVs an edge over the IC engine car, it does come at a cost. While the IC engine car can be filled with fuel in less than five minutes, the EV takes an hour or more to fully charge. And in our fast-paced world, the EV definitely takes a hit on this one. The high energy density of fuel in IC engine cars also overshadows the energy density of lithium-ion battery packs. These batteries are packed together and evenly distributed on the floor of the vehicle. Because of this design, the EV's center of gravity is lower than that of an ordinary car's. This in turn provides reinforced stability during collisions and makes the EV a tad safer. However, the regular charging and discharging of these batteries generates a lot of heat, which, if not controlled, can interfere with the operation and safety of the EV. To prevent overheating, a battery thermal management system is in place to ensure optimal temperature and remove excess heat via the radiator. Their IC engine counterparts, instead, have a cooling mechanism to manage the heat of their engine. This difference in heat generation can be attributed to their distinct working principles. In IC engine cars, combustion gives rise to the temperature and pressure needed to move the pistons. This transmission translates to the drive wheel, which in turn turns the tires. All of this mechanical action often causes uneven force and power, but in an EV, the motors turn the drive wheel by a simple three-phase AC input. As the AC power input gets linearly scaled and fed to the motor, the speed and power output is uniform. This also means they have more torque right off the bat when compared to the IC engine car. These conventional vehicles also have a complex transmission system, which means that they require gear shifts to function across different ranges of speed. However, EVs have a single speed transmission that allows them to work across different ranges of speed. This is because the speed at which you travel is determined by the extent to which the accelerator pedal is pressed. When you take your foot off the accelerator pedal and press the brake, the kinetic energy is transformed into electricity that the battery can then store as charge. But for the IC engine car to be able to do this, it needs a battery and brushless DC motor. And if it isn't obvious by now, the IC engine car has way more moving parts than an EV. As the EV has less parts and just one moving part, which is the motor, maintenance costs are significantly lower. Regardless of EVs coming with a hefty price tag at the time of purchase, they are actually a third cheaper than the IC engine when considering maintenance and travel per mile costs. Now that we have covered the basic differences between EVs and the IC engine car, let's take a look at the pros and cons of EVs. A few advantages of the EV are that they do not require gasoline, and as a result, have minimal CO2 emissions. 
They are also cost-effective in the long run, easy to drive, and reduce noise pollution. Although minimal noise is supposed to be a good thing, silently moving around on the road may be a safety hazard. On a similar note, let's look at the cons of EVs. And as good as they sound, they do have a few. EVs may not have a strong presence in countries with poor electricity sources, as their usage may hinder electricity needed for daily life essentials. Charging points are also not as easily accessible or available at this point in time. And even when you find one, charging an EV takes more time than filling gas in an IC engine car. And unfortunately, EVs cannot be fully deemed eco-friendly as their source of electricity may be generated from non-renewable fossil fuels. When deciding whether or not to buy an EV, it may appear to be a luxury investment for many due to the initial price tag. Now, here's our question. Which vehicle would you buy? We'll let you sleep on that for now.